Welcome everyone to the Saturday forecast for trade week call with Avoria Prime. My name is Steve Vetteral, your risk manager, <clears throat> who is going to be talking in a slightly different format both today and on Tuesdays going forward. So I'm going to throw out a lot of quick hit stuff. I'm actually going to have about a 10 or 15 second pause that will allow the uh, renders of the video to actually stop the video and they're going to break it up into two formats a little more extended you know where you guys can certainly see me drone on about stuff um, and just a quick hit for the week okay so I'm going to go through real quickly risk disclosure get into just a quick discussion of the forex factor talk a little bit about what happened the last two weeks you know obviously the U.S. dollar has had a big sink due to no surprise you've been listening to my calls we've been talking about this ad nauseum um, and how it's affected all the other currencies from a tail wagging the dog type of thing. So real quickly, uh, trading the foreign exchange markets carries high risk and may not be suitable for all investors. Trading on margin and utilizing leverage can carry even higher level of risk that can lead to a complete loss of investment funds, essentially blowing out your account. So as I always suggest, please do a demo first of the software that you decided to subscribe to. We have four new pieces of software, as you saw the call is scheduled for next week on the main Avoria Prime channel. I would highly suggest tuning in and or watching a recording of that since you can see the four different pieces of software that are going to be presented. They are different types of trading strategy than Einstein and Alexander, um, which is a Martingale strategy. So second page, <clears throat> Avoria Prime does not recommend any settings. I do. Um, we are not a financial advisory firm. They just license software you can use however you want and at your own risk and discretion. Software does come with default settings upon initial setup, which our users have the ability to customize if they want. So we have nothing to do with the customer's brokerage account. We don't solicit or take investments. We don't recommend any brokers. Uh, we just sell and <clears throat> licenses for amazing software and now much, much different types of EAs coming out as well. Um, and do keep in mind that there are no company recommended settings. Please do not post that anywhere or Mariska will get mad and she will chase us all around with a big shotgun. So my suggestion is, um, you know, always make sure going forward that you have at least a very basic understanding of what took place in the market. It could be 10 seconds of at least seeing on some of the different charts I show you. It could be going to, as I've shown many times before, in finviz.com and just looking at a dashboard. Uh, let me shift over to show the... Let's have a quick discussion on the uh, Forex calendar in the upcoming week here. So, there we go. Beginning of the month brings us what in the United States? NFP, which just stands for non-farm payroll. That is Friday. So those of you that are running the software that is U.S. dollar-based, you know, unless you're having trades that are open and in drawdown, um, I probably would have the software off Friday, okay? Because we've had a lot of moves in everything dollar-based and everything that has been sort of a, an ancillary or a tertiary trade on that has gotten knocked around as well. So those wondering why did GBP NZD just do a skyrocket in the last week is simply because GBP has been skyrocketing because the U.S. dollar has been falling through the floor. <clears throat> so looking at this, the different uh, items coming up, anybody trading AUD, you can see the RBA uh, rate statement. Um, so there's obviously a lot going down, down under in both countries there. You can see unemployment rates beginning of the month, monetary policies. I mean, the week was just absolutely fraught with speaking and big news events. So those of you that are not in drawdown, um, you know, <clears throat> there certainly is an argument to have the system off. I do know the developers are running this week. Um, keep in mind that is not the Lord and Savior of trading EAs, but um, it is important to know that the guys that wrote the software are actually running it this week. There is a chance that we will not have a trending week. Why? Because we saw such parabolic moves in the dollar. 
Okay, so the US dollar, I'll show that chart next, but just wanted everybody to just catch a quick view of what's going on with these news events. You can always click on these boxes here if you want to do a deeper dive on it. But um, normally I, I probably would have the software off in the next week if I was not in drawdown, okay, or I had some open trades. Essentially, I just wouldn't be accepting anything new. But as we jump to the chart, we had a big breakout. You can see this is a one-day chart, tradingview.com, euro US dollar. Um, we've had from the red line here, which is a big break point off of almost a perfect cup with handle shape. This is a bullish pattern that is formed on the daily chart. This is a very uh, demonstrable pattern in terms of breakouts to the upside. And sure enough, as soon as we broke past it, we had what's called one time frame. You know, maybe not that's the easiest to see here, but notice every candle has a higher high and a higher low. This is called one time framing up um, until we had just a pause, almost a, uh, a small, <clears throat> and then we had a big reversal on Friday. Okay. Now, since we really moved just thousands of pips um, since we broke from 115, my thinking just generically is that we're probably going to see a bit of a range. Okay, so this is a good opportunity if you want to go a little deeper in technical analysis uh, to actually draw a pitchfork on, which I'm going to show here in a second. But before I get into the, the deeper stuff, um, we had the large account uh, turned off um, since um, almost the last two weeks. We've been traveling with the corporate events in Nashville and client meetings I had. And Tyler's had a whole bunch of stuff going on as well. Um, <clears throat> the, so we've just basically just had it off um, for the last two weeks. Probably dumb luck on our part, um, albeit I was a little concerned about this thing starting to break. And then if we started to trend a martingale strategy, uh, which is what Einstein and, and I, Alexander are, it is not always the most successful in these periods of time. Albeit, I must say, I talked to a lot of people this week, actually had a pretty good week um, for those that made some slight adjustments to or in the case of Alexander, not accepting too many short trades, right? Or even removing Euro JPY from the three ring pair. So some of those that were pretty flexible on adjustments actually had a pretty decent week. So that was good to see. So normally I'd be a little concerned with the events that we have coming up. Um, but going forward, um, I think that we may, since this, potentially was a, a little short-term top. I could be wrong. Uh, potentially when you, when a lot of times when you have really protracted moves and you hit, which was probably almost a, a three standard deviation, which means that this was nothing more than a really stretched rubber band um, that you usually will have a pause um, and it will s spend some time basing within this level right up and down here. You could all the way come back. Typically you'll see a 50% retracement. You know, so if you fib lovers out there, you can set your fibs somewhere around, you know, almost a perfect 115 for this. <laughs> and then the top at 119 and look at your retraces to see if, in fact, that is the case. This is where um, a Martingale strategy would do better in a basing or a <clears throat> tight ranging market moving essentially sideways uh, between two points of higher or lower. Uh, will this ultimately be? Um, an area of, of resistance for at least the immediate term. I don't know. So that's all the comments I want to make on Forex Factory. Uh, I want to pause for a bit here. I'm going to open up the Q&A window. Let me just uh, get this rearranged here. So those of you who want to stick around for a little bit of a deeper dive, let me just set this up. Feel free to ask any questions, Q&A, not the chat window, please, okay? Questions in um, Q&A as well. All right. <coughs> so <coughs> for those of you asking questions like what should the settings uh, should we have on a 5K account, uh, which is one of the questions that came in, I'm actually going to ask a question back to you. Uh, I'm not sure if you've seen any of my previous webinars where I do a really deep dive into the settings. So we've made slight adjustments from the out-of-the-box settings uh, to come up with a little more conservative settings. The settings are what's called uh, 
uh, high volatility settings. We've talked about them. The um, May 30th presentation is when we've introduced that. Uh, so I would certainly go back and watch that. You can just go into the Avoria Prime back office, click on your product. Uh, if it's Einstein or Alexander and see all of my uh, review videos that have been put up there along with the notes. All right, so let's... It's a good idea to ignore the dollar this week and only trade Euro JPY. Um, I would not. <clears throat> uh, the problem with cutting out a bunch of pairs unless you truly know what you're doing um, and you are an expert at moving around through a lot of the different stuff I'm showing. Let me show the account uh, while we're at it. <clears throat> So this is our live three ring paired account. Um, this account has taken a little bit of pain as you can see at the bottom of the screen, uh, probably because um, it just did not do well when I turned it back on yesterday um, as you know, we had a, a big fat reversal <laughs> on the daily uh, with a really, really protracted move up uh, on Euro US dollar. So. <clears throat> this was taking the opposite trades. Certainly still may play out. I'm not going to step in front of it, um, nor am I going to cut any pairs off. <clears throat> Do keep in mind, we have for Einstein and Alexander, I'm probably going to be getting approved um, some additional settings uh, to show you guys. So in the settings window, <clears throat> What we're going to do doing, as I think that I'm probably just going to make an executive decision and do this myself, um, the range between levels we're going to be lifting up uh, to a higher point. So most of the settings that I've seen, especially during these crazy volatile times, uh, we've moved the range between levels up to 25, 30, or 35, which means this is taking less trades, obviously, but it's also a lot more conservative, okay? Slight adjustments to this, not really willing to change that as far as a public talk um, on these, but I think I'm going to be lifting up uh, the range between levels. <clears throat> this will allow you to have a more conservative or more super conservative. Yes, it's going to be taking less trades, um, but at the same time, during these really crazy moves where a martingale strategy can't always be the best, um, this is where our other four products are really going to be able to shine, having more than a couple of strategies playing in the portfolio for everyone eventually, I think it's going to be much more diverse and a lot less risky um, depending on a period of time. So <clears throat> I think what our, our whole goal is to try and get to a period of time um, where, um, you know, get to a period of time where we just sort of try and look at where the trend is if, if it's up or down and then have a particular strategy running that week uh, to take advantage of the current market situation, whether we're trending up or down, um, <clears throat> maybe choosing a strategy to take advantage of that and or um, having a second strategy running is almost like a hedge inside the portfolio. <clears throat> um, one of the other things that I've noticed with some really good settings is the stop loss is higher. Okay, so essentially you're not getting stopped out of trades. You're just casting uh, a much wider net, uh, essentially, of total account equity risk. Okay, in some cases, some of these adjustments have been made as well. So I'm going to try and get um, compliance approval for some of those additional settings, which are really just more conservative than what you're seeing now. Uh, if you guys want to attempt to use those, you'll have some choices of uh, something more conservative. All right, um, so that's where we're going to cut it off right now. So for those of you who want to stay with us, that's kind of what I wanted to address this week. Uh, if anybody wants to stay a little longer, you're welcome to, because I'm going to talk and to go through some more of these questions at all. All right. So yes, I would trade all three pairs. <clears throat> uh, trade stop loss is at uh, 250 for now. Um, you, you're always welcome to put that higher. Um, just understand that you know that's putting more risk in the account. And some would say that's actually putting less risk um, because you're not taking stopouts, uh, but you are letting the account go deeper. Okay. 
Okay, so we got that question answered. Let's delete that. I started with an 800 drawdown from last week. I've been trading Jesse's GBP NZD and GBP AD settings. I ended up with this. I ended up with the software while I was keeping over Wednesday night. I just ran away until I hit equity protection, and lost 10k. Is there any way to protect against this by not accepting trades so it doesn't stack a trend and counter trend? Sim? I, I'll tell you what, Evan. Can you? Um, because I'm not going to step in front of what Jesse's settings are. Uh, I don't trade GBP NZD, mostly just because I don't have the time. I really wish I could. <clears throat> um, but if you could send me that in an email form, uh, maybe make it a little clearer what you did. Um, I can get the email over to Jesse and have him take a, a closer look at answering that. But I can't really answer this question on something I don't know um, exactly what he's doing as far as settings. <clears throat> If my stop loss is 250 and my lot size was 0 0.01, how does my drawdown get to 700? Uh, Carrie, that question um, really just can be answered by, you know, we, we saw really big moves in the last two weeks. So <clears throat> the a Martingale strategy is not always the best when you're seeing this type of move, right? Here's where it's great. See right in here? This is basically what's called a basing pattern or a, or a <clears throat> balance, if you will, between two tight areas. This is where this type of martingale strategy works better. It does not necessarily work as great during trendings, you know, <clears throat> or a complete reversal, as you may have seen in my account, because it got kind of beaten up on Friday with the conservative settings. So ideally, I would not have had as many... Um, I wouldn't, wouldn't have taken as many trades had I had... Uh, a slight adjustment to um, that. So this is the FX for um, the big account we're trading, Euro denomination. We're going to turn this back on um, on Monday or on, Saturday, on Sunday. Right, let me go back up here. I uh, would not be messing with the max levels. If anything, uh, if you want to, let me show, that, show this. Uh, you can adjust up. Actually, let me jump back in. Get back into the account. Okay, so the question was max number, uh, max number of levels. So we adjusted. No, what I what you can play with though is the range between levels. You can go something higher, like a twenty-five or a thirty or a thirty-five. Just know it's going to take less trades. It's possible to have a setting for the spring and take the spring and certain miles. Not sure what you mean by that question, Janet. You might want to re-ask that. It's a good idea to ignore, ignore the dollar this week and only trade yours. No. Trade all three. If you only want to trade two pairs next week, which is the question from Elizabeth, um, I would not be trading um, Euro JPY. Next question is any of the high balance of meaning out of box settings. <clears throat> so, Paul, if you didn't hear a little earlier, I talked about we're not making any changes to the range multiplier position size, although I have seen some pretty pretty solid arguments to that effect. Um, but what we are probably going to be changing here is this up to either 25 or 30. So this is a good question, Philip asks. How soon will you start making suggestions for the new way after the recent ones? <clears throat> so Gearbox is going to be run by Tyler because that's his baby. Um, I'm not going to get too involved in that because Gearbox essentially is requires a fair amount of um, how should I put it? Learning in the beginning. There's a whole bunch of levels and there's gears that can be turned on. So 
um, it's going to require a fair amount of education to get up to speed with a little steeper learning curve in the beginning. That's going to be run by Tyler. So eventually I'll probably get in tune to that, um, but not right out of the box. And the other, uh, one of the, uh, two of the other EAs don't require any changes to settings at all, by the way. So more to come on that. And do keep in mind that myself and a lot of the individuals I mentioned, uh, we're going to be really tearing apart um, what's going on with the new products that are being launched, you know, just doing a much deeper dive, you know, as I always tell everybody and a lot of my colleagues in the game here, you know, I always enter into any thought process uh, as far as software as an institutional investor, basically saying, would I let this EA tear loose on a million dollar account or $5 million account? So I'm going to do everything in my power along with help from everybody else um, in terms of analyzing this to determine, you know, are these as good of a product as everybody says, which is great. People that are currently out of the market, William, um, I think that <clears throat> there is an opportunity to make money next week as long as we don't continue ripping the face off of the Euro US dollar shorts. Because if you think about this, just going back to the chart here, this has been an absolute barbecue of the shorts. And honestly, anybody taking <clears throat> this break out of this candle you see right here that I'm hovering over, you know, that was a fairly low risk shot because there's a chance that we could reverse back under 15, right? Like we kind of a little bit did intraday there. Uh, but I certainly wouldn't have been hitting shorts on either of these days, nor if I had had Alexander, would I be accepting any shorts because it was time for a big old barbecue of the shorts. And um, I would not have been in the way of that, <clears throat> especially with this one time frame, which took place for five straight, actually six straight days. Um, right here until it stopped. You mentioned you recommend to turn off the software on Friday. Yes, turn the software off on Friday if you are not in drawdown or you are an expert with the software and you're okay running through all news events. There are some that run through all news events and they've got a really, they've got the software really dialed in and they're on top of it. Uh, would you increase the wind to stop for news to 60 minutes from 15? Uh, I mean, you can. I mean, I, I don't know that there's that much risk in changing that. Uh, the key thing is, is just don't be trading around news, uh, certainly 60 minutes after, uh, but 15 minutes before is okay. And that's really in this setting right here, if you guys are not familiar with that. Um, I do not, just so you uh, everybody knows, I do not run Alexander, you guys. <clears throat> so since I'm a financial advisor in the U.S., I have uh, essentially a pass, so I can run Einstein. Um, I don't have the time to accept trades from Alexander. What are your thoughts on trading gold? Um, I'll tell you, gold, I just, as, as some of you probably heard me talk you know, in, exhaustively on <laughs> I don't trade gold, okay? Um, and I know a lot of people and all these ridiculous television commercials are telling you to get into gold. It's going to break past uh, its big level. It's been holding under for years and just start to rip. Um, again, that would be, you know, obviously U.S. dollar negative. Um, <clears throat> but I, I just don't trade it. It's just a personal preference. Nor do I own any gold. <laughs> I don't even have any gold jewelry. Can we use three levels only? And if the price moves, for instance, 200 pips and other three levels, and if it goes crazy like the USD pairs and are another three levels, total nine levels in order to cover a wide range of price action. Um, three levels only, price moves, 200 pips. Not sure on your question, Mauro. If you're asking me to break down what Alexander's doing, um, it's essentially just taking the sequence up levels all the way up to eight. So essentially zero through seven. Good question, iPhone. I don't know. Is euro US dollar reversing is likely to go higher? Um, 
we're up against a big point. And actually, let me show you guys this since we're talking about this. <clears throat> this is a Andrews pitchfork. For those who don't know what this is, it's just measuring levels using <clears throat> you know different types of mathematic calculations. It's kind of like a Fibonacci extension or retrace. Um, it's usually very good to do on something like this. <clears throat> but ideally, we're going to pull back here a little bit, maybe to the 50 retrace and move essentially above 115. And then my assumption was we're going to bounce between these levels. If, in fact, that's a correct assumption and I'm not wrong, which I certainly could be, um, then I would want to be more interested in a martingale strategy. Or if you want to get a little more educated on this, um, you could just be accepting trades from both sides. You know, if we're going to continue to one time frame up uh, even higher, uh, I, I can't tell if that, I think a lot of this is going to be predicated upon whether the um, U.S. House of Representatives, the Senate actually put together an actual bill to put on <clears throat> Trump's desk to sign um, and whether or not um, that adds significant debt. You know, one bill is significantly more trillions than the other. So both houses are, or I should essentially the executive branch, both parts of the branch are very far apart um, on a deal right now. Uh, if we get a deal from the Democrats or look more like that type of deal, it's just going to be more debt for the country. And I would expect the U.S. dollar to continue to fall and the other currencies to continue to rise for the foreseeable future which could be the next couple of weeks. But a lot of this hinges on what all these knuckleheads in Washington um, can or cannot come together on. Um, Elizabeth, uh, we've talked extensively about that. Just Google it. Just drop Martingale strategy into Google. It'll give you a huge, long description we've talked about. If we take manual trades while the AI is running and successfully make gains in the account, will this disrupt the weekly goal accountability? No, it won't. Uh, <clears throat> it's just other trades going on. The sequence will still continue to play out. Of course, I don't take manual trades inside the accounts where the AIs are running, just so you guys know. Mostly because I don't have the time for it either. So if we are trading to Wednesday, from um, it depends. So <clears throat> the question is, if we are trading to Wednesday, from can we trade Euro JPY? The, I don't like this pair right now, albeit it has shown promise over the last year. Just right now, it, it's been tough. So I, I just, I, I, you notice I don't even show technical charts on it because we're all kind of wasting our time looking at this. Um, but this would be the one of the three that I would turn off. Now watch, I'll tell you that, and it'll turn out to be great the next couple of weeks. <laughs> just almost always the case with this stuff. <clears throat> I'm running my software from Monday to Wednesday, so can I trade? I mean, you can do whatever you want. You can trade Euro JPY if you want. Uh, it just depends on whether you're in drawdown or not. If you've got open trades on it, I wouldn't be stepping in front of those trades saying you're smarter than the software, right? Because I'm not. I'm not going to tell you guys to do that. Um, Molly, everything depends upon what I just talked about. All depends on what they do in the U.S. as far as this debt bill. Now, and the other thing is, <clears throat> it could be a little bit of pin action off of that. If you guys don't know what that is, that means some sort of big event, you know, like we hit the main pin and all the other pins drop. <clears throat> you know, if another stimulus bill gets approved, it certainly could signal um, a clean swing from some of these other central banks um, and other governments to add, you know, bailouts two, three, and four as well, right? So I think that's going to wreak havoc <clears throat> on the currency markets. You know, it's, it's a crazy time we live in. Next question is, you guys are asking some good questions today. Right now, the upcoming news folder events, though, for a couple of questions I've actually gotten on this, the upcoming news folder events, which is right here, it's not indicating to me um, any type of extension or retrace. It just all depends upon movements. Typically, when you've seen huge moves like this, you will almost always have a period of balancing out or doing some sort of retrace um, throughout this move. That's ideally what I'd like to see. 
Um, you know, unless you were taking long only trades, then obviously you'd be looking for pullbacks to the bottom of this pitchfork um, to accept those trades to potentially project uh, back up or go back up towards that 119 top of the range. If I was discretionarily trading this, that's what I'd be looking to do. <clears throat> the safer trades are always the one that are the more extreme out. Like for manual traders or discretionary folks, right here at the top of this, this was actually a safe short if you were manually going after it. You know, this is kind of the stuff I wish Einstein and Alexander would signal, right? Just moving up into a big area, especially if you guys take a look at a monthly chart on this. Um, you guys have told me that I can just click in this window and I'll straighten it out. And there we go. That's good advice. I'm <clears throat> still learning how to use this software. I'm not an expert on it yet. <clears throat> but what we pointed out this morning in our powwow among some of the leaders is that this is a big move in Euro USD um, on a monthly chart. You could see the, this is one of the larger moves we've seen in, in uh, here was here. <clears throat> you can actually measure these out too, but look at some of these moves throughout the financial crisis. These moves were huge. You know, if we were to go measure something like one of these big candles, you know, we haven't even traveled half the distance that some of these moves were. I mean, this particular move was um, all the way up from 141 <clears throat> down to 123. I mean, that's thousands of pips in movement. Um, I don't know if we can move that much. We could, certainly have in the past. Um, now, in the financial crisis, I think, personally, was a lot more bananas than right now because these credit fault swaps were basically about to bankrupt a number of big companies, which would have completely spilled over into the financial system and wiped out AIG and Goldman had a whole bunch of the other side of the trades in AIG. For, for those of you who haven't under, that don't understand what I'm talking about, there's a great movie out called A Big Short. Uh, it's actually a fantastic flick. It does a really good job of detailing exactly what went on during the 2008 financial crisis, which essentially just boils down to more than a number of uh, different organizations, mostly U.S.-based, a little bit in Germany and certainly in the U.K., going out and just piling on credit default swaps against bond portfolios that had AAA ratings but were full of junk paper. <clears throat> Great movie. You said you wouldn't be accepting any EU cells. Someone who doesn't trade wouldn't have known that or any adjustments to the settings so the person is going to just keep accepting whatever trade is sent. So, Philip, the, the key thing to that is that you are better off, anybody is better off with Alexander if you have a basic understanding of some of the technical software that I'm talking about. So my, my suggestion is, and, and I know a lot of people are like, well, I don't want to do that. <clears throat> then you can at least watch my call um, and know that once it broke, as I talked about last Saturday, uh, that I probably, from an Alexander standpoint, in Euro USD, I would not be accepting any shorts. Longs only, which would probably be, be better to just let the software throw both longs and shorts at you this week because we'll probably spend some time basing. <clears throat> I don't know the answer to that, whether or not they're going to push the stimulus forward uh, after or before non-farm payroll. I have no clue the answer to that question. For next week, starting tomorrow, would you trade on two pairs of three? And if so, did you say? Yeah, I've already covered that. <clears throat> I'm not going to do any analysis on Euro JPY. You guys are going to have to do that yourself. I actually hate that pair. I really do. Right now, <clears throat> I'm not going to do any analysis on stuff I can't do. With. <clears throat> Getting a lot of the same questions. You guys listen to my answers? <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, if you don't have any drawdown, you're certainly welcome to trade Euro JPY. So we run the software on a one-day time frame. Was a question from Alex um, because it's more conservative. Okay, it's it's based on daily charts or the movements or the variety of movements and technicals and all the other factors that Einstein and Alexander use as far as the algo that it is. Um, you have much better success rate in patterns on a daily chart. Now I know those those that will argue against that. Um, but statistically, you have 
better patterns formed on a higher time frame. Some of our other EAs are going to be trading other time frames. You guys are asking some good questions. How come Einstein doesn't have the max lot size option? Yeah, so let's go back to the screen here. Starting lot size right here. Is that what your question's about? 0 0.01. Conservative settings, by the way, starting lot size 0 0.01 per 3K. You don't need a max lot size if you have a starting lot size. With, Alex, <clears throat> with Alexander, what single pair would you run instead of EJ? Uh, just a single pair would be the Euro US dollar. Actually, hang on one second, you guys. I got to take this call. All right, let's go on to the next question. Will non-farm payroll look better if people are not registered unemployed as a result, strengthening the dollar? <clears throat> um, right now, I'm not sure how much strength you're going to get out of the U.S. dollar with a great jobs numbers for just one month. Um, it certainly can't hurt, but I don't know that it's going to move it that much. For diversification, choose six unique currencies for three pair. What would they be? For diversification, choose six unique currencies for three pair. Can you re-ask that question, Dylan? I'm kind of confused on what you're what you're asking. Does it take trades other than against the trend? Alex, do, do me a favor. Go and Google um, Martingale um, on the strategy. <clears throat> the Google uh, explains it in, in real detail, a lot better than I can. <clears throat> So you're telling me that the software used to have a max lot size. Is that right? Because right now I see starting lot size, which I have highlighted here. You're telling me the software used to have a max lot size option. That maybe was before my time, guys, so I wouldn't know the answer to that one. This software has been operating since about February. And maybe he, uh, I don't know, I, I could certainly look into that. I, I don't know the answer to that question, Alex. If you want to send me an email, you can. I can forward it to Cam. Maybe he could show that. <clears throat> Not sure what you guys mean by max lot size. <clears throat> So then there was a reason um, they took it away. I'm not, I'm not sure the answer to that. I could find out for you guys, though, if you want. I'll put that on my to-do list here. If you guys Google anything, I, I just Google Martingale strategy in Forex. It'll explain it. There's a number of different ways to explain it. Let me just take a look at these other questions. Uh, so on, this look, a lot of the questions a couple of you guys are asking me, if you guys went through the onboarding videos, I'm sure if you guys have seen how to do that. 
but if you go into your back office, <clears throat> um, and mine's going to look a little different than yours because my back office, I, I have multiple instances with different types of software uh, running on them. But essentially, you'll just go to your dashboard and you'll click on your product, Einstein or Alexander or Iris. And by the way, you know, before I forget, actually, let me jump back. I don't know if you guys have taken a closer look at this. I, I just haven't had the time. But I'll tell you, the Hawkeye trading group, you know, this is all... Um, in the morning time, <clears throat> but their training is, these, these guys are doing really well. Um, I, I've taken just a little bit closer of a look at it this week. And, you know, some of these trades that these coaches are calling out, you guys, this is more of like a live call trading room. Um, they've done really well. Two, three, four, five percent, and you're out and finished for the day. So for the Hawkeye strategy stuff, which is right here, um, I'll take a closer look at this. I'm going to take a deeper dive myself. Um, but they really teach you how to see, and essentially, the, uh, the Iris is wedge alerts, you know, where things are sort of building into a wedge. And then typically it breaks from that <clears throat> or other patterns, you know, kind of like the cup and handle I taught you guys. Um, but these guys have actually been doing really well. So I think I'm going to try and jump into one of these sessions if I have some time earlier uh, in the morning next week. But I would definitely check it out. Cheap product to add to your list, too, if you want to add another subscription. But you go into the back office, choose your product, Einstein. And these are all the onboarding videos. We're actually going to be building out, which I've got to put some work on today, um, a whole onboarding that new subscribers are going to go through. This would be fantastic before they can actually access the software. You're going to have to go through a whole training. This is going to save everybody a bunch of time with their up and down line, trying to get people on board that have just didn't have a process. You know, it's like I, the, the term is often like you're walking into a mall um, and you're just, you know, you're running around from store to store and you don't really have a plan versus, you know, going through a car wash where you're forced to go through each process to get to the end. So it's kind of what, um, what it's going to look like. Looking forward to that. All right. I'm going to end this. So if you guys have any questions, get them in now. Let me just scan the window. You guys want this max lot size brought back in if it, if, we're, if we don't have the ability to adjust that let me know if, if you want that brought back in I can find out All right. Um, one of the questions was, why does my software go to weekly goal reached? Well, if that's the case, you've done great. So I'll show you the screen here again. So you can open one of these windows. Of course, you know, you, I open the window I don't like. <clears throat> Let me just go back here. Let's go back to the old Euro US dollar. <clears throat> All right. So you can reset that with these buttons right here. Uh, but let me just open up the settings window for this. If trailing equity is selected and your trailing equity is 2%, which is the out of the box default settings here, um, as soon as the account reaches 2%, the hunter, as I call it, turns itself on inside the algo, um, starts protecting the account. So if it was to fall back 1%, uh, it would close out the trades. If you have the trailing equity set to fixed weekly goal, okay, just like you see here, then this line underneath it, the fixed weekly goal of 3%, uh, now becomes operable. It was not operable the way I had it set before with trailing equity. So as soon as you reach fixed weekly goal of 3%, you're out. Software turns off. Or I should say it gets you out of, <clears throat> gives you a picture goal. Now, if you don't want that, you can certainly turn that off the trailing equity. Uh, you could set your fixed weekly goal higher if you want to shoot for something higher. Just understand if you do that, it's a more aggressive type of setting. You know, what if it doesn't get to positive 3%, right? What if it gets to your goal is 4 and it gets to 3.5 and, and then drops all the way back down and takes it into a loss? You're going to wish you had set it at 3%.
okay, so somebody's telling me they took it away when they added the 250 pips section. <clears throat> so if that, in fact, is the case, I'd rather have the stop loss adjustment than the max lot size, in my opinion. Yeah, it looks like a couple of comments that it's, it's not as relevant, more important to have the trading stop loss and the ability to turn that off or on or adjust it higher. Uh, Jesse, this, this software is uh, for people who know nothing about Forex. Yes. Um, the key is, is that they do need to go through the onboarding processes, as I've shown a number of times in my calls. I think that's important that you go through the Daisy Duncan's Forex Basics. She actually does a really good job in that program. Uh, it's really good stuff. I mean, hell, last time I watched it, I learned a few things. <clears throat> so it really rec I really recommend that uh, going through all of that. And everybody on your team I would do the same. It's going to take some time. And I always use the analogy of, you know, the average institutional um, professional trader, discretionary is what I call it. Some people call it manual trading. Uh, discretionary trader. Um, has spent anywhere between about nine to 15,000 hours mastering their craft. And with the software we have being released in their current products, um, it helps cut that learning curve way down. You don't have to make those types of decisions, but you still need to know how to adjust the risk on it. So start with the demo, you know, those types of things. Email is, let me just post it here in the chat window, guys. My email is S-V-E-T-T-O-R-E-L. Voriaprime.com. Did I get that right? Voriaprime.com. Yep. There's my email. If you want to send me an email, here's how the process works. I need the FX book. Make sure not everything's all locked up so I can't see it. You can always lock it back up in the future after I look at it. Um, and do copy a picture of the settings window for me as well as a complete and thoroughly written out description of what you are looking for. Okay? Don't just send me an email that says, help. <laughs> I'm not going to respond to something like that. Okay? <clears throat> all right. Da -da 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 -da. And make sure you guys all tune in to the software release call coming up this week. It's going to be a big deal. Got a couple of questions on that. All right, so you guys are asking a lot of good questions. This is great. Marty, I wasn't suggesting trading only two pairs this week. It's just, you know, a lot of us just haven't had a lot of luck um, with Euro JPY. It's wreaked a lot of havoc in a lot of accounts. Um, and, and, and honestly, that that's happened in some of my accounts too. But you know, the problem with reducing diversification uh, is that it's riskier and <clears throat> there's going to come a time where I reduce um, that ad risk and then the pair starts operating like it used to. It actually ran really great last year. Heck, it brought most of the profits in last year. They get a couple comments. We don't need max lot size. Okay, so Stephen, thank you very much for your... Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, thanks for the heads up on some of this stuff, guys. I, I didn't I didn't know that. Yeah, you're welcome. What's this stuff I've been operating for as long? <clears throat> so uh, I think I answered that question, didn't I? Software's been operating for over a year, uh, but the newest versions came out uh, a few months ago. Voria started right around February. Company's barely 120 days old. So as you guys can see, the, the amount of work that we put in and Sal and his team have put a tremendous amount of work into the startup, we're only four months old. <laughs> Crazy to see how far we've come in four months, right? Imagine where we'll be in a year. Uh, I actually just heard, the reason you're seeing it on CAM software, um, for those of you who don't know, it's Cameron Kirker, he's one of the, he's one of the big guys, um, is because he's using an old version of the software. That he's still running. All right, cool. You're welcome. Thank you, thank you, guys. Appreciate everybody joining here.
coming up on an hour. Let your hearts not be troubled. Um, I promise we will have all kinds of much better EA products to trade all different types of market conditions, right? Seems like I've been saying that forever, but the release is coming this week, so I look forward to uh, talking more about other programs other than Einstein, Iris, and Alexander, which I still love. They just have been tough in this particular market strategy. <clears throat> so have a great weekend, everybody. And uh, if you got any questions, feel free to send me an email. But uh, may the trades be with you. I think